Well, Home Secretary Marshall Fudge, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. I understand the racial disparities we have in real estate today and how you're addressing it. I want to start with a brief history lesson, because after World War II, we had racist government policies that subsidized new homes and suburbs on the condition that they be for white buyers only. And at the same time, it labeled African-American communities as high risk or red line communities, which drove away lenders, which cratered home values for blacks, while whites saw their home values increase and then passed down the wealth. To what extent do we still have a housing gap between white people and people of color based on those racist government policies of the past? I'm really glad you asked that question. It is as big or wider now than it was in 1968 when we passed the Fair Housing Law. That is how wide the gap is today. Um, and we are trying to address it in the best way we can by allowing people uh, access to home buying. But I would suggest this. Most of it, even today with what we're dealing with, with this new rule that we are promulgating today, uh, it is to address the systemic uh, discrimination and segregation and racism that we as a federal government have allowed to go on for much too long. And that communities of color, as you say, it was designed, it's by design that communities that are black or brown or poor are put in, into segregated, isolated communities in, in our cities. Research shows home appraisals for properties owned by African-Americans are statistically lower than properties owned by whites. Today, in the here and now, is that mainly still happening in neighborhoods that had been redlined by those old racist policies in place before they were outlawed in 1968? Or has it spread well beyond that and is now happening basically everywhere? Oh, it is, it is happening everywhere. There's no question but that it happens everywhere. It is, there is still redlining, there's no question about that. Uh, but what we see is that the, the more brown or black your community becomes, the, the lower your valuation is of your property, the more white it becomes, the higher the value is. That's a fact. You say too many home appraisers will base a home's value on whether its occupant is white or black. Why in the world in this day and age would they do that? Uh, it's just something that they've always done. I mean, even the um, the data sets are such that before you even look at a home, the neighborhood, which you called it right the first time, was redlining, even though redlining has spread to other communities. They redlined properties that are owned by black or brown people. It's just It's just the reality of the world we live in. How specifically are you changing the system so that people of color can recover from a bad appraisal on their FHA insured home if they think the low-balled appraisal was based on the race? There are a couple of things they can do. They can go to HUD.gov and uh, file a complaint. They can call our Fair Housing Office, which is 1-800-669-9777. Or they can go to, we have HUD offices all over the country, but they ought to know that they have a right to request a second appraisal if they think that they've been discriminated against. They have a right to file a complaint if they choose to do so, but they also have a right to be treated fairly. And that is what this AFFH rule is doing. It is saying we have to treat all communities with fairness and equity. In investigating complaints, how can you or how do you substantiate that a home was lowballed due to race? What kind of evidence, in other words, would support the owner's suspicion that they were victims of racial bias? Well, I know that you have seen uh, people come on and say, look, I had my house appraised. It was appraised, I'm just using any number, $400,000. I took out all my pictures. I took anything away that would make anybody believe a Black person lived there. And I had it appraised again, and it appraised it twice what it appraised for the first time. It's clear. I mean, this, these are things that are very, very clear. Or my home, I had I had my white neighbor come and sit at my house when I, when I showed the house, and it got more than it did when I was there. I mean, we have ways of doing it. If your review process determines an appraiser is lowballing homes based on the owner's race, what will the consequences be to those appraisers? Will they be allowed to just keep doing it? We are having um, hearings so that we can take the kind of action that is necessary. Because you see, we don't need to have a, a new rule to do that. If they violate the Fair Housing Act, they have broken the law. Fair housing is the law of the land. And we're going to enforce it. Head Secretary Marshall Fudge, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me.